Hi, this is Fat Girls Rule, and I have my third movie video for a uh, Ghost Stories, and these were kind of um, a collective um, of stories that I got from um, my friend Rodney, who lived here for like a year and a half, and the experiences that he had, and then at my old house that we were raised in and lived like, you know, all our youth and, you know, until I was like 19, from like 3 to 19, uh, stories from that house that came from my mom or me or uh, my dad, just the little things they saw. So let me get started on these. Um, <clears throat> okay, my mom saw a woman, she was walking down our stairs, she walked down the stairs and then there's the entryway. And then you go downstairs again to get down to the basement, or, you know, this, under the, I guess you call it basement, even though it's finished. And um, when she was walking down, and she was, like, on that landing where the entryway is, she was walking down the next set of flights, and she said there was a woman that appeared, and she was walking down, and then she had turned around and looked at my mom, mom and she had, like, the skeleton face. And she said it didn't scare her. She just kept walking and pretending she didn't see her, but she's, like, all dressed in white. And she's very petite, and then she just, you know, she had just disappeared after she looked at my mom. So there's one. <clears throat> um, my dad was laying down one morning. My mom gets up and goes garage selling. So it's probably kind of Saturday. My dad was still in bed sleeping, and my mom would get up, like, at 6 in the morning to go garage selling. Because she's an antique dealer, and you can find, like, all kinds of awesome stuff at garage sales. And anyway, she had uh, left, and um, my head's kind of cut off. Um, she had left and went garage selling. Uh, my dad heard somebody come back in the room and uh, walk through the room, um, mess with some stuff, made some little noises here and there, and then there was nothing. And my dad's like, you know, I'm not hearing her leave the room, and. Um, he looked up, opened his eyes to see what she was doing, and um, there was nobody there. And then he told she, he told my mom about it, because she's like, no, I didn't come back. And he goes, well, somebody was in the room messing around with stuff. And she went in there and looked, and there was an antique uh, jewelry box that she had, and the lid was open on it. And, um, you know, that's when me and my sister were teenagers, and we never messed with her stuff, you know. We, I mean, if we wanted to look at her stuff, we could just go look at it. She wouldn't care. <clears throat> but not at 6 in the morning. <clears throat> and so, anyways, um, one time my mom called, and this was when I was out of the house, moved down the house, and she was, like, frantic, and I went over there, and she um, was outside with the dog, uh, watering flowers or whatever, and she heard this big crash. So she ran inside, and there was a big, big picture, like a big home interiors picture on the wall. And it flew off the wall. Mind you, the nail was still on the wall and the hook was still on the back of the picture. Everything was nice and tight. It flew off the wall and went several, several feet in front of itself. So, And it hit a fan. And it hit the fan so hard that it knocked, that it pulled the cord out. Because it knocked the fan over, pulled the cord out. And then um, it had flipped over because it was the glass side up. And then it was just shattered you know, to a million pieces, the, the glass was. And so that really upset her. Cause she's like, how did this happen? You know, we're trying to think of some logical explanation. So we're checking the nail, we're checking the hook, and everything was fine. And, yep. So that was a really neat one. Um, <clears throat> my dad would be, like, on the bed, like, sleeping in the morning, and my mom would be going grotelling, and someone would come back in the room and then sit on the bed next to him. And he'd feel the bed, you know, sorry, my nose is itching. Uh, the bed, like, go down a little bit. And he would wake because he's, like, so sleepy, you know, and just laying with his eyes closed. Probably hoping she would go away. <laughs> and, um, and he opened his eyes. It's like, why didn't she talking, you know? And, and there was nobody there. Um, <clears throat> let's see, me and my ex-husband were downstairs because, you know, that's where my bedroom is. <clears throat> And we were the only ones in the house at the time. And, <clears throat> sorry, I should have brought some water down here. And we heard, because we have hardwood floors. So there's hardwood floors in the hallway. And we heard, and that was this house. Um, someone walking down the stairs, like with boots on. Because it's, not the stairs, down the hallway. And because it's right above our the bed. And I'm like, oh God, my dad's here. Go see what he wants. 
Because <clears throat> we might have even yelled to, hey, we're downstairs. And no response. And uh, so he went upstairs to check it out. And he's like, nobody's upstairs. And they just walked down the hall. They never turned around and walked back the other direction. So it's like whenever we hear people going down the hall from the basement, they walk down the hall and then like into my son's bedroom. And he doesn't sleep in there because usually he sleeps with me now because he drives me insane and he won't go to bed at night and he keeps me up. And then I get so ticked off that I'm up there like yelling at him and then I can't get back to sleep, you know. So I make him sleep downstairs with me. And um, <clears throat> so he'll have a lot of commotion. You'll hear people. You'll hear people walking around in his room, and because it's so easy with hardwood floors. I mean, it catches everything. Um, <clears throat> the, in in this room that I am right now, this used to be my son's uh, bedroom. It's just a little spare bedroom we had made. And from upstairs, um, there's a vent that I could like. Um, I could talk into that vent, and he could hear me. So I'd be like, Jonathan, you need to go outside and mow when he was sleeping or to wake him up for school. I just bend down and yell in the vent and he could hear it down here because there's vents that run across the top here. And um, I could hear people down here in the room talking and I would come down to check to be sure TV wasn't on or radio wasn't on, there was nothing on. And I would hear people talking down here though. You, It's very um, kind of, you know, it's kind of like, what's up, what's up, what's up, nah, but it is, uh, you know, it's like, what's that noise? Oh my God, that's my dad that's talking. And, and it was the same thing with the room that we had downstairs at my mom's house. You would, you would swear to God there was a radio on and you'd go in there. Even when there was nobody even living in the room, when my mom was by herself, she would hear the radio in their plane and there was no radio in the room playing. So that was a normal thing in that room. And for years is that you always heard a radio in their plane. Um, recently, these are two recent accounts. <clears throat> this one is the most recent one. This one was Monday. I was cleaning the playroom, and I cleaned it, like, totally, utterly, perfectly spotless. Not one single Lego on the floor, not one, nothing, zero, nothing. It was spotless. And I went through and run the vacuum real quick, you know, just get up any little pieces of whatever, a little piece of trash or whatever. And I thought, you know, I'm going to go uh, pick up the bathroom. So I ran in there, picked up the bathroom real quick, just a couple of minutes just to put stuff up. And went back out in the kitchen and I looked in the playroom and there's a toy that I hadn't seen before. It was like a plastic um, slinky, but it was all twisted together. It was no good. I'm like, how in the heck did I miss a hot pink toy? There's no way I did not miss the toy. And every single toy is in its place, in totes. And so I picked it up, I threw it in the trash, and I told my niece about it, my 12-year-old niece, and she's like, was it like all messed up and like you couldn't fix it? And I said, yeah. She said, Kelly, I threw that in the trash last week. And so, weird, very weird. And then about a month ago, <clears throat> me and my son were driving home. And we kind of went like a different direction because, you know, I, you know, I was like, I don't know where I'm going. Let's just, let's just go with it. You know, I like to get lost and then try to find my way back home because that way it teaches me to read the signs better. And then I teach my kids how to, you know, read the signs to know where they need to go to get back home when they learn how to drive. And, and they just kind of, uh, just, you know, just driving stuff basically. Well, I'm driving home and the window was down. And I could see, I mean, I just like, not even so much peripheral, my peripheral vision caught it, but I turned and looked at it. There was this black object that came from the ditch and went after my car and I thought it was like maybe a black cat, right? So, I mean, it came, I mean, it charged at my car. I mean, my car was already here and it went wham in my, and my Saturn is low and it, like was trying to hit the side of my car and I was like, you know, trying to get over and I slowed down and I'm looking in my rear view mirror. There was nothing there. And I, there was something that tried to hit the side of my car. Very weird. Cause I thought, Oh no, I hit a baby kitty crap, you know, cause it was just black as black could be. And it was like attacking the side of my car, but it didn't make a thunk or a noise or anything, but it was like, and there's someone behind me. I thought I wanted to pull over and say, did you see that thing trying to hit my car. It was so weird. Um, 
So anyways, I gotta hurry. I'm almost done. Um, black figure was out in the playroom. This is coming from my friend um, that lived here. He saw a black figure out in the playroom. And then one night, uh, he heard the door open and close like at 2 in the morning. And then he heard them walking down the hallway because he lived in the room in the hallway. And he went to go open his door and say, hey, you're getting home kind of late or make some comment. And he said, there was nobody there. And he goes, he heard the door open, close, heard them walking down the hallway. He went to catch them, to scare them or whatever. And they were gone. So, um, and somebody keeps messing with my alarm clock. They keep turning my alarm off. They change the time and it's being a real big pain in the butt. So hopefully that will stop soon. Bye guys. I'm running out of time. See you later.